and welcome Asashim in the hangar. Today I can give you a comparison between 3D Maker Pro Moose LED based scanner versus Creality Raptor which is laser and LED based. 3D Maker supplied me with a review sample of the Moose and like half a year ago I got the Creality Raptor. Way more expensive then, it's a bit cheaper now. In a practical application here on the bench I will show you this around $470 modern 3D scanner is a practical tool or not. Let's jump into it. Okay, as you can tell this has a strobe blinky LED and it's always important to get the right distance. Scan quality normal and I'm in texture scan mode because I have a lot of texture on this. And it works best if you make move back and forth to have different depth informations. You shouldn't make the scan too long, like a thousand frames is maybe almost too long. But also I want to get all the details. 1200 frames should be enough. Now the rebuilding. I got a new laptop here, it's quite powerful. And it uses all of the cores, 90% application is good actually. Let's continue with the screen grab. Cut the bottom away. This looks pretty good already. Scan the underside. Now we want to have as much overlap as possible. Like the wheels are a good overlap. You need to select both of them and then hit align. And if we were lucky we get an auto alignment. It looks kind of nice. So one thing that I noted with the Moose is its RGB camera is better than the Raptors because the textures actually look really, really lifelike. But I will go with the default values. Hit process. Bear in mind the 100% GPU usage are my screen recording. Generic and moderate apply. Okay, look at that. We already got a very nice looking mesh. But the point was not to choose the easiest to scan object like sometimes they give you test figurines that are optimal for scanning. And so it always looks good if you scan something with them. I just choose a random object that I would probably scan in real life. Texture mapping operation ex executes failed. So from this fusion object here we can just select this and export. Reorientate means uh, selecting the pane. So in that case the wheels, click point 0.1 here, select point 0.2 also here on the wheel, point 0.3 like so, and then you have a nice pane. I will use an STL and call it F1 Car Moose. I will use the Creality now. It's Creality Scan 4 now. So it changed a lot during the time. I learned that I need a lot of tracker points so I have these 3D printed tracker points. Yeah, and then I realized that even with my new laptop here, which just has an onboard graphics card and not a dedicated GPU, I only get like four frames. You see it on the bigger screen. It's very laggy and not a good experience. So this is main finding. Laser scanning needs a dedicated GPU, way more powerful computer. With this thing, you get away with older hardware. My brand new laptop here, just a normal integrated graphics card and it is quite slow on the scanning in the laser mode. So, Change to my gaming PC with an RTX 4070. Okay, and you see with the proper PC you get so much more frames, like 50 frames instead of 4 frames. It's the way to go. And I would just wiggle up and down, maybe back and forth a bit. get extreme good details with that many tracking points. It's really a joy. Even down to the oh, even down to the spoiler in the front. You get every detail that we want. I think we did a really good job on this scan. Almost looks perfect, but I will do an underside scan as well. The auto alignment capability now. No, we don't. Ah, the 
the wheels look up and down too similar. So we need to make this like in a handbook. <laughs> E line. Yeah. Oh boy, that looks so good. Yeah, once again, the color camera of the Raptor isn't the best. You see it here. Which is a bummer because the details are really, really good. Okay, for our final comparison round, I loaded all the models I did into the 3D Maker Pros software, which is quite nice. You see, you can even measure things here, like so if you're not too dumb and then you see how many millimeters this is wide. F1 car scanned with the moose in blue LED and camera mode. Not laser, but blue LED. It is definitely better than the IR scan from the Raptor. Creality Raptor's infrared mode falls apart on such small details that you get on model cars. IR mode on the Raptor was always designed for larger objects. But if I now show you the laser result, it is really quite good. See the rear spoiler and like the engine or exhaust or whatever that is, looks really, really nice on the laser one. From laser versus infrared versus blue LED strobe. And this is my older laptop, it's like 10 years old. And I want to prove a point if we can use this for scanning. Okay. I will just hit scan and see if it works. It looks good. I mean, I get 12 frames. It looks pretty solid in terms of performance. So this could be a benefit if you're dealing with older hardware. Sometimes you don't need a perfect scan, you just need a scan for reference. Almost 1000 frames, this will gonna take forever to rebuild. <laughs> Especially on the older laptop here. Here of course we have 100% CPU power, but it's only an i7 8th generation. 2 minutes, maybe 3, which is less than I thought it would take. So. An i7 8th generation laptop. I think it has 16 gigs of RAM. RAM is quite important for the scanning tasks. It's not too bad. I mean, it will not be the most accurate measurements. It's a bit low res, but I'm happy with it. If you want to measure distances like from this one antenna to the other, see it's 15 centimeters. A similar scan is this MetaQuest 3. This is just closing holes there. And once again, writing or labels look three-dimensional, although they aren't. Oh, that's a bit of an invention of the device there. Like this USB-C connector up there that's not connected. It looks good. Simple things like this mushroom. I didn't scan it in color mode, but it would have looked awesome in color mode for sure. This scanned flawlessly and very easy. Here I can compare for you the scan of an RC plane canopy. It's a styrofoam and you once again see the styrofoam is picked up as three-dimensional bubbles, although they aren't. If you see the laser scan, you even see these little production markings here, but it's not as bumpy as the mousse makes it look like. And you have details like this fin here and the hole. That's a lot better in terms of details, of course. But on the other hand, this is half the price of this. So this scan works totally fine for most applications, I'd say. Finally, this is a model car. It was quite good, except for the headlights and the windscreen here. So I didn't use scanning spray, else this would have looked better probably. And also the underside and the engine. Okay, I'm very impressed with the scan of this. Yeah, okay, it's a matte finish and it's not too complex geometry. So I'm very impressed with the scan results that I got of this. The one thing though, if you want to go for texture mapping, you need to simplify it and try to get the face count down. Like with 100,000 faces, it's still fairly complex and it took quite a long time. I actually thought it would have hung. Yeah, now it really looks good and it could work as an asset for a computer game. Unreal Engine computer games or something like this. It was a really nice and easy scan. This was my first try. 
This is very much simplified now. For 3D printing you would go with a more detailed scan like this, where you have a texture over it. You don't need a lot of faces. Sometimes though the assignment of those vertices, tiles, I mean here it's super sharp and here it isn't. Yeah, that's it for the comparison. Unfortunately I couldn't connect my OnePlus 12 phone here via an OTG USB adapter. Those were the three that I tried to use. 3D Maker Pro doesn't supply an OTG adapter, which would be nice of them. Neither do they supply a USB-C cable on this end. And of course swapping it and using this on the phone doesn't work. So I couldn't use this on the mobile app. Let me know if you had any more luck and which types of OTG adapters work for you. I tried to scan this bigger RC car that I, I did some 3D print jobs as you might recognize. I want to conclude that larger jobs like this without any trackers with the Moose Pro are a bit of a pain. It loses tracking often. I'm not sure if this would work to scan this all in one go or even align it for multiple scans to be aligned. So this is hard. This would work way better with a laser scanner and with not only down there, but also on sticks floating in 3D space. That's the way to go. Or just applying a lot of those tracker points directly on the object. But then again, after the scan finished, I'm kind of impressed by the level of detail that I got out of my sloppy scanning here. So with enough time and patience, maybe you can scan this whole complex task at once. It's not easy to scan large objects because the scan area is kind of narrow and also small window where you can scan. So you have to pump back and forth and move all around and then you lose tracking then you back up and yeah it's a bit tedious the quality quality is not bad okay i just checked it and currently it's available for 425 euros seems like a pretty good deal for me it's an easy tool it works with older hardware that i've seen if you want to apply a texture on it simplify it to below 100,000 vertices rgb cam of this is better than the Creality Raptor. The measurements seem to be accurate. And I'm not sure if I would get a thousand dollar plus laser based scanner. I mean, yes, the additional accuracy is really, really cool. I hope by now you have a bit more information than you had before watching my video. I enjoyed testing it. Thanks again to 3D Maker Pro for sending me this review sample. Check out the links in the description. They might be affiliate links. My opinion, however, is my own. I don't have to send them my video for approval and I don't want to do this. I thank you for watching my content. Leave me comments down below. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Thanks a lot for watching. See you next time. Bye for now.